I believe that John Calipari has a better than 50% chance of losing his job because I don't think he's fun to be around when things aren't going his way. I think he's stubborn. I don't think that he is going to be okay with somebody coming to him and making changes. I think he is a self-centered person more so than Kentucky centered. He has no ties there other than cashing a check and being the head coach. I got a weird hunch that John Calipari is going to be out. And I've talked to some people in Kentucky and they, they led me to believe that, that it's a real thing. And if it happens, it's probably going to be relatively soon, maybe by the end of the week. What are your thoughts on John Calipari? Is his run done in Lexington? No. And I will tell you why. I'm ready. I think Kentucky, at their heart, wants him to leave on his own, which he's not going to do because he has a lifetime contract. So why would he not just take in that, what is it, $9 million he's making a year? He's going to force him to fire him. It's $33 million to buy him out. So it's a big chunk of change. But, okay, let's get to that number in a second, but continue. Yes, so Calipari is the, when we talk about ultimate salesman, he's the ultimate salesman of college coaches, isn't he? Sure. He, not that that's bad. No, not that it's bad, but literally he is a salesman and nothing else almost. And he makes you like him because when he talks, he has a likable interview, right? You've interviewed him, right? You can't help but like him when you talk to him, right? I enjoyed talking to him. He was way more open about getting fired than I thought he would be by the Nets. Yeah, so he immediately is already – this is why I think he's staying. He's he's doing this to save his job. He immediately said that he's going to um, mull changes to his philosophy after the first round exit last night. He said, uh, quote, this is apparently um, – he basically said it's going to change how he approaches his team's roster. His quote yet last night was I've done this with young teams, my whole career, and it's going to be hard for me to change that because we've helped so many young people and their families that I don't see myself just saying, okay, we're not going to recruit freshmen. However, then he talked about how he's looking at changing his philosophy and adding more experience to the roster. And I think he said all that to let Kentucky know, wink, wink, I'm not going to live and die off one and dones anymore if you don't want me to. I don't see him being a guy that's going to give because of pressure. I, I mean, he may believe that in his heart of hearts that that's the direction to go, but I don't think it's going to be because of pressure by Kentucky. There's no pressure when it comes to boundless moving. The type of service they can give is up to you from a two-hour minimum the turnkey operations, they have you covered. Their motto, personal service without limits, isn't just a tagline. It's part of who they are. It's in their DNA. Boundless moving in Charlotte and all of East Tennessee. Boundless moving personal service without limits. I think if you told him he had to change his philosophy of one and done, that he's more likely to leave. I don't know how you have that conversation. That, to me, is as uncomfortable as you've got to fire your staff. Maybe even more uncomfortable because you're going to a guy and you're saying what you've done your whole career, what you believe in, as much as you believe in your family members and your wife because you have done this your entire life, is this one and done model? I think he okay. would have a heartbeat if you tried to get him to change it. I think that's a little revisionist history on John Calipari because, yes, he always had one-and-done players. But, you know, when he was at Memphis, he had one one-and-done player and usually a bunch of, like, regular four, three, four-year guys around him. So he had Derrick Rose the year they went to the national title game. But then they had Chris Douglas Roberts, Joey Dorsey, Robert Dozier. Those were all three-year guys. So it was like, get the star and then mix it with the experience or Tyree Kevin's the year after. It, it was unprecedented what he did at Kentucky when he did all one and duns. I think he proactively said this. I don't think Kentucky forced him to. I think he proactively said it. And here's what I think he's doing. I, I'm going to go out here on a limb and you tell me if I'm crazy. Okay. John Calipari is hiding behind the one and done philosophy. That's and crazy. what I mean by. You think that's crazy? No, but when you tell me, tell me this is crazy. I'm always going to have that ready. Okay. John That's Calipari crazy. is John Calipari is hiding behind the one and done philosophy. And here's what I mean by that. 
Jay Wright said it last night on TV, and people keep saying, you know, and and, and they, they're right on this, and I've said this for a while, in an age of NIL, it's going to be harder to win with one and dones because experience is just going to outweigh it because, as you said, Dave, you're going to see stars come back into college basketball for sophomores and junior seasons, right? Mm -hmm. I agree. So John Calipari is leading you all to believe, he's swindling you all right now. He's leading you all to believe that the reason he struggled is because this one and done philosophy doesn't work. No, he struggled oh. because he just flat out can't coach. He's not a good ex. I see where you're going. No, you're yes. Right. And target, target hit dead center, sir. Yes, because what he wants you all to forget is in 2014, 2015, 2013, he had the number one recruiting class like he always did. But they all came back for 2014. He got the entire cast to return after going to the national title game. And then he got another number one class. The deepest team in college basketball history. When undefeated, they go to the Final Four, they lose to Wisconsin, and Frank Kaminsky works Carl Anthony Towns. Dave, in what stratosphere should Frank Kaminsky play, outplay Carl Anthony Towns under the basket? Should never. And John pointed out what you pointed out after we, I think, got off the air last night. You said Calipari's teams get beaten in the paint. He can't coach front court, which you pointed out last night. Let me ask you this. From the SEC, Kentucky's rivals, and Tennessee, do you want Calipari hanging around? Because his teams really can't get it done in the clutch, but you play a team every year that's uber more talented than you. So should Rick Barnes, when he – hits the press conference uh, rounds before the round of 32, does he say, I'll tell you what, a John Calipari they got up there at Lexington, he's incredible. Because when the other coach compliments you, that means they think you're a big loser. So should he go to the press conference today and say, we're excited about the game, but I want to take a second. And he could do this, man. He could preach at you, couldn't he? I want to take a second. And I just want to, so tell you that people are being too hard on John Calipari in Lexington, and he's given himself to this sport and bettering kids, and he's changed lives, and he deserves better. I call for a contract extension. I'm Rick Barnes. I endorse this message. Boom. That's what I would. I mean that. <laughs> you love you guys it. Are... You love it. I, I mean, I, I like what you're saying because here's the thing about Kentucky. I think Kentucky is that type of program where unless you hire Billy Gillespie, 90% of the time, they're going to be a hey. great program. I like to, that's my Billy Gillespie impression. It's also oh, my Steve okay. Sarkeesian impression because it just means intoxicated. Hey! <laughs> Speaking of Sarkeesian and a former boss, the funniest is when Nick Saban lamented LSU firing Les Miles. He was like, the state of college football where you could fire a coach that's won a national title. And then LSU hired Ed Orgeron and Nick Saban was quiet. He's like, All right, I'll, I guess I'll take you guys having Ed Orgeron as head coach. Um, my Orgeron taking Louis! It's a little bit different. Where uh, were we reset us? Okay, so you does, do you want Kentucky there? I'm going to go a little bit deeper here, okay? I think you want to see Kentucky maybe fire Calipari and have to pay that buyout. Because if they do, Dave, then they will allow Mark Stoops to run the program into mediocrity because they'll never fire him. Now, here's the thing. Tennessee's always going to be, be better than Kentucky in football. But you never want to run the chance of Kentucky hiring a generational head coach in football, right? That could always happen at a place like Kentucky or anywhere, right? Oh, Where you could it hire did. This. It did happen. Paul Bear Bryant. That, you're right. They they hired Bear, Bear Bryant. And 67 years after 1950, they retroactively declared that season a national championship season because that's what, they, that's what Kentucky does. You never want – now, Mark Stoops is a, not a bad coach. I think he's a pretty good coach. But I think if you're Tennessee, you're happy with Mark Stoops at Kentucky, aren't you? Yeah. Like, you're not worried about that. Yeah, I'm good with that. If they fire John Calipari and pay that buyout, they're going to be stuck with Mark Stoops for a long time, and they're not going to think any bigger than Mark Stoops because they're not going to pay any buyout to get rid of Mark Stoops. They get rid and of John Calipari. They have to keep Stoops. They don't have, as much as we knock John Calipari, a championship-winning coach. So suddenly, Kentucky's whole athletic department – doesn't look so great. By the way, I was told that Mitch Barnhart, who's the athletic director, who is a former associate athletic director at Tennessee, that he exited stage left as quickly as possible, avoiding reporters. These conversations are happening. This is not something that we're manufacturing. There are people discussing whether or not they want Calipari back. 
and there are people discussing in Calipari's family whether or not he wants to be back. This will be another one of those things that you can say you heard it first on Off the Hook Sports. But I, I, I do believe that John Calipari will not give an inch on cash. There is going to be no settlement. He will take the booze. Remember that one dude had a bag on his head at Kentucky and Rupp? Was that two years ago? He is not going to feel pressured by that at all. He could have a nine-year-old daughter get beat up at school because he lost to Louisville, and he's going to be like, we just got to get better. And that's it will not affect him at all, all the outside pressure. He's not going to meet them halfway at $15 million. It's going to be 33 point blah, 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 million and blah, 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 change. And that's what he's going to have to have. Oh, absolutely. And like, it's funny because what we're talking about, let's talk about what you're saying. And I agree with you. John Calipari is not thin skinned, right? He is as thick skinned as they come. It, he, he doesn't care. Give me my money. Yeah, that's, I agree. That's what he said when I had him on the air. I now remember when I said it. He said, I said, all right, I won't be your coach. Give me my money. Yeah, I mean, this is a – let's call it what it is. John Calipari is born in Pittsburgh and spent – and before he went to Memphis in 2000, John Calipari's entire tenure was a Northeastern basketball coach, right? Big yeah. East era, area, Atlantic 10, right? Yes. There is I, – I, guys, I, I'm just going to tell you this, and Dave can tell you this too. Northeastern media is brutal to their head coaches. They're brutal to them. And new, like New York media, Jersey media, they are so much more brutal to Calipari than even Kentucky media could be to Calipari, quite yeah, honestly. See, I, I think that's an old notion because I don't think media has been able to replace those reporters, those tough reporters with more tough reporters because of budgetary issues. I I don't know that it's just, I mean, it's tougher in New York than it would be in Knoxville on the Vols. Don't get me wrong. But I don't think the media in in big cities in New York City is as much of a factor as it used to be. I don't know. I still think regional media is a thing. And it, because, okay, Knoxville has always been a bigger city than other SEC towns. I mean, Dave, just in my short time with you, I've noticed Knoxville media is much rougher on Tennessee than Tuscaloosa media is on Alabama. I mean, sure. they just are. Now, now to be fair... There's been more reason to be tough on Tennessee the past 15 years than there has been to be tough on Alabama. Okay, fair enough. But like just in general, I, I, I still I get what you're saying, particularly with message boards. You can't just ignore things in the message boards anymore. And that has as much of an impact as anything. And by the way, Kentucky's message board sites crashed last night. I don't know if you know that because people were so mad. Um, Can I share one slightly off color thing that I saw on a Kentucky message board? Sure. Some guy said, what would you do to if John Calipari would get fired right this moment? The guy responded on the message board. He said, I would have relations with your dad. And then the guy's response was, I would too. <laughs> His own dad. Come on. Really? That's a really. Uh, uh... You should, there's an Instagram story of that. Of, uh, yeah, of, I mean, of, at that point, you're thinking, whoa, Kentucky lost to Oakland. You know what I need is a little homosexual incest. I mean, that is bizarro.